remember my name, and I'm sure you're going to remember the name of my next guest right here. It's Mr. Gary Hughes, and uh, welcome to Headbangers Ball. Gary, how are you doing? I'm doing okay, actually. I've just come from the venue. It's a little bit hectic down there. <laughs> the first band are on, and kind of the sound system's working very well, so we're hoping for a great day, you know, with everybody concerned. Absolutely. Very positive thing for AOR and Melodic Rock. Um, now, you are a very, very brilliant and versatile musician, um, and you've done come up through the kind of old school, I guess you could say. Could you tell us a bit about your career and what you've done? Yeah, basically, um, I did an album three years ago for that was only for Scandinavian release, German release, that went out through EMI Electrola. Uh, it didn't really do particularly well over here. It was only on import, mm -hmm. and uh, it was kind of a, a hard process of battling my way through to get the, the deal that I finally got with Now and Then, which mm -hmm. obviously the new, new label, new AOR label. But uh, I think sort of on a whole AOR gets a kind of a, a little bit of a rough trip especially in, in England mm -hmm. and probably undeservedly so mm -hmm. so um, hopefully we're hoping to turn it around a little bit and I think probably my career has been ho well hopefully will be a little bit representational of that in mm -hmm. that you know if it does succeed then hopefully AOR as a whole in England will succeed as well so yeah it's been a slog but we're getting there you know good because you have actually studied music as well haven't you yeah I went to uh, I went to the Royal Northern College of Music in Manchester um, to take all the grades and the various things mm -hmm. but um, I mean I don't know if that's always a good idea because it does kind of kill a lot of the creativity mm. um, for the kind of the formal this is the way things should be done mm. but it does help if you do know a little bit mm. about the music to actually structure and create the stuff I'm doing anyway absolutely well you mentioned there that AOR and melodic rock is having a hard time in the UK and Europe why did you decide to set to, to stay based in the UK when maybe it may have been a little bit easier for you in America well, that's, that's the crazy thing. Um, I mean, basically, I've always made a living in Europe. I've never really been able to do that in England. Um, and I suppose America would have been the first, the first step from there. But mm -hmm. basically, with this resurgence, mm -hmm. I think that it really has got a fighting chance this time. I mean, there are a lot of people there this afternoon, for instance. There's only two showcase dates mm -hmm. on this particular stint. But, uh, you know, the same show is going to Paris, mm -hmm. and hopefully it'll work its way around Europe with the same bill. Mm -hmm. And really, it's taking the best around. I think if people are actually exposed to AOR a little bit more, Absolutely. then then maybe maybe that'll be the next thing. Maybe after the Seattle thing, maybe it'll be AOR again. It's always been around. So. Of course. Okay. Well, we are going to get exposed to some more AOR because we are going to talk to Gary a bit later on. But right now, let's see him live in action at the Now and Then Records Gods of AOR showcase.
I think you know that you're mine. I could be yours for life, darling. Stay with me. And set your heart and you'll find me there. Give love another try. Special. Talk to Gary a little bit more now, and you actually have a very special relationship with Now and Then Records because they actually used your um, early demos as kind of like a flagship recording. Yeah, they did. Um, basically, there wasn't a lot of money around in the in the early days for them or for me, and uh, I prepared a new set of demos, and I think the whole the entire of the first record, the Now and Then one, the entire album of mine, cost £3,000 <laughs> to record, mix and put out and everything. So, um, yeah, it was very much based on the, the strength of the songs they felt at the time, but they just wanted to get something out in the marketplace. Yeah. And I think because it did so well, then obviously uh, the releases after that, the Mark Free, the Canata mm. and now the Jeff Paris, mm. um, have all been kind of due to the success of that initial one. So I feel a little bit proud of that mm. in a lot of ways. Absolutely. But, um, I mean, they'd have probably succeeded anyway because you know, there are people out there who want to listen to AOR, so, but I was pleased it was my thing that was flagship in the thing, yeah. So tell us what you're working on now. Have you got a new record coming yeah, out? I'm doing it. Well, we signed a new deal um, with the Japanese company, mm -hmm. uh, Toshiba, mm -hmm. uh, their company Zero Corporation. But they see, it's a very strange situation. I'm actually doing two albums, a follow-up for the, for the first Now and Then album, mm -hmm. but I'm doing also a ballad album because they see this, a lot of the ballad stuff that I do is very sort of similar to kind of an English Michael Bolton, or they see right. it that way. I don't really see <laughs> it that way, but there you go. And I think they're going to try this dual kind of control of my career with regard to releasing a ballad album as well. Well, it'll be powerful, mm -hmm. but um, it will be a double barrel two album thing wow. the next time I release. So. Are you going to be doing any more shows apart from the AOR stuff? Well, yeah, obviously the AOR stuff with Paris, mm -hmm. um, but then I'm going to, I believe I'm going to Spain in December mm -hmm. and then back to Europe, Holland and Belgium, I think, mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. in November. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully America at the start of next year, um, where I'm actually going to mix the two new albums over in America with James Christian, actually. Um, mm -hmm. He's going to be producing, so that should be very good. I mean, do you find this genre at all limiting? Because obviously you're a very talented musician and you've got a, a lot of different facets to your career. Do you yeah. find this at all limiting to what you want to do? Well, probably probably the opposite, because a lot of the new arrangements on the new albums, I was a little bit limited with the demo status of the first album, but with the two new albums, I've gone for a very kind of um, orchestral uh, sections on a lot of the stuff so I've really been able to go to town on string arrangements and various other things mm -hmm. and also guitar arrangements you know with mm -hmm. harmony guitars mm -hmm. playing quick and playing you know, but, but playing very harmonically as well you know and harmoniously so I mean I'm enjoying the whole thing you know it's just it's, it's all a step upwards for me and hopefully mm -hmm. it'll be a, an evolutionary thing where hopefully it gets better and better well I hope the people that listen to it think so anyway absolutely well thank you very much for joining Thanks. me Gary and good luck with your career Thanks and uh, we're you. going to hopefully see more of Gary in the future Right now we're going into another short break on this special.